In 1670, the port city of Charleston, South Carolina, and the state at large has been home to a vibrant Jewish community for over 300 years. Its long and rich history allows Charleston to claim many Jewish firsts, the first Hebrew Orphan Society, the first Hebrew Benevolent Society, the first movement to reform Judaism in America, and the first Jew elected to public office. John Locke wrote the Constitution of the Colony, and it's the only Constitution in history to welcome Jews by name. And uh, so Jews who heard of that, the freedom that was available here, flocked to South Carolina. And in 1800, of course, we had more Jews than any other city in the country. Charleston is one of the earliest Jewish communities uh, in the United States, and it's a community where Jews were able to thrive even uh, within secular culture. And this was the epicenter of, of Jewish life in terms of religious reform, in terms of cultural productivity, in terms of, terms of economic life. Uh, this is ground zero of, of, of Jewish life in America. Jewish South Carolinians would continue to prosper for many years to come. They played an active role in the founding and development of towns across the state and were particularly successful making a living as merchants. Over time, that began to change. Younger generations of small town Jews, educated and ambitious, no longer wanted to stay home and mind the store. The Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina was established in 1994 inspired by a panel discussion at the College of Charleston. Participants spoke with a sense of urgency about the decline of Jewish life in the small towns where they grew up. Their conclusion was inescapable. Country Jews were an endangered species, and it was critical to record their stories before they disappeared from the scene. And that's what we're seeing now, the passing of that whole way of life of the small town with a Jewish merchant and uh, the very important central role the Jews had in the economy of, of the state and the region. And before it's all gone, we have to put it down. We have to get the story told. And that's what this historical society has been doing with great eloquence, I think. Isidore Lurie and I were friends from childhood, so long ago and so far away that I cannot remember how we met. And he began to seek out first his own family and then the history of the Jewish people in South Carolina. Of course, he talked about it all the time and that all brought it to my attention. And I became interested and I became a great uh, exponent of, of promulgating this, this cultural experience in, in South Carolina and bringing it to the world. Izzy Lurie and Alex Sanders came to me asking for Jewish studies to take charge of the historical society because they thought that it was a natural community outreach for Jewish studies at the college. And community outreach has always been the program's hallmark. When he sat down with Senator Lurie, he, I think he appreciated that the new president of the college, Alex Anders, was a very special friend of, uh, of, of Senator Lurie's. Um, and um, it ended up being almost a perfect symbiotic relationship between Isidore and Marty and President Sanders, who always described himself as a semophile. Uh, and uh, he was enthusiastic about every aspect of Marty's program, the Jewish Studies program, the um, talk on Jewish Historical Society, and eventually the um, whole efforts in the library to create a Jewish collection. Over time, the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina exceeded every expectation of its founders. 
becoming the largest statewide Jewish organization in South Carolina. The Jewish Historical Society has had incredible successes over its 20 years. Its cemetery records, its historical site markers, its, its website all bespeak real serious advances in South Carolina Jewish history. It, it's just an amazing accomplishment to see how South Carolina Jewish history is now on the map. It's on everyone's radar. People come and visit South Carolina and know that there's a long, rich Jewish history here. We set out very consciously to document, promote, and preserve South Carolina's Jewish history uh, in, in many different ways, in many different programmatic ways, but th that's, that's the goal of both the Historical Society and the Jewish Heritage Collection. Our biggest initiative, and we worked on it for seven years, was the exhibition, A Portion of the People, 300 Years of Southern Jewish Life. Um, we developed that here in, in the Jewish Heritage Collection with the support of the Historical Society and through the instrument of McKissick Museum at the university who actually physically mounted the exhibit. One nice feature of the Historical Society is to see how people felt free to tell their own story, that their story really mattered. It was a way that people came together sharing a history and being Jewish in sharing that history, that the history itself made them Jewish. It, it's been a real success of the society that that has happened and has impacted real lives of real people, wonderful people. I also think we've in some ways empowered the local community. People are more willing to kind of stand up and be counted, so to speak. They're, they're excited to be Jewish in South Carolina. They're excited to participate in these various historical events. And I think there's a real pride in the longevity of the community. With 20 years and a multitude of accomplishments behind it, the Jewish Historical Society has taken the next step to continue its remarkable trajectory. The Pearlstein Lipoff Center for Southern Jewish Culture will bring uh, Southern Jewish history to the forefront. It will unite the Jewish Heritage Collection, the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina, the, the academic offerings of the Jewish Studies Program, and enable us to do community outreach in a way that we haven't done it yet, in terms of regular tours regular lectures, really visitors coming to elder hostels celebrating South Carolina Jewish history. It'll really sort of uh, provide synergy for the various things we're now doing and bring us to new heights. What we plan to do now with the center is to teach students about Southern Jewish history, particularly about how events and developments in, in, in South Carolina speak to broader patterns in the South and within within American Jewry as a whole. Um, we also plan to take our message about the wonders of South Carolina Jewry, Jewry to a larger audience as well, to, to really carry this message to, to Jews elsewhere in the United States. The Pearlstein Lipov Center for Southern Jewish Culture establishes Southern Jewish history as a priority at the College of Charleston and ensures a secure future for the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina. Resources for research, teaching, and community outreach will continue to grow. The Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina has a lot to celebrate. We're celebrating, I mean, th this has been an incredible run this 20 years. Uh, I assure you when we sat on the porch of the F Department of Philosophy at the College of Charleston on a spring day in rocking chairs and talked about what we might do. In our wildest imagination, we had not envisioned all that would come. We've really put Southern Jewry on the map and should be very pleased with that. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years, isn't it? I think we can celebrate that we have formalized a, a culture, and that's no small thing. It's been my pleasure to direct both the Astrid Arnold Jewish Studies Program and the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina. It's been a joy to work with the various people to make it happen and to sort of take a little bit of a role in, in, in allowing the, both these organizations to achieve whatever success they've achieved. No one had any idea, 
any idea that it would result in something quite so successful. Uh, Izzy is smiling on us right now.